<coughs> this morning's message would be or will be delivered by our lovely songbird Hanif Lalu. Can you please come to the podium, Hanif? Thank you, Eiffel. Good morning, everyone. So nice to see you all here and present for Youth Sunday, which is something we must always remember is the fifth Sunday. Um, well, it happens when there's a fifth Sunday in the month. Come out, support our, support our youth, right? So let's have a full, full gathering on that Sunday. Now, let us get into the meat of the matter. According to Dr. Richard N. Fogoros, a former professor of clinical cardiology at the University of Pittsburgh School of Medicine, people who are at risk of having a heart attack will have that risk increased by approximately 40% between the hours of 6 a.m. and noon. Dr. Fogoros and other medical practitioners in the field have several theories for this. One such is directly linked to the body's process of the simple or not so simple event of waking up. When you are asleep, you become somewhat dehydrated. Because of this, in the process of waking up, your body starts drawing blood from the bloodstream, water, sorry, from the bloodstream. Your cardiovascular system has to now work harder to pump blood. Adrenaline is one such element to aid this process. And as some of you might know, the more adrenaline you produce, the higher your blood pressure. And thus, we end at this conclusion. Of course, not one of us feels or thinks about what it takes for a body to wake up on a daily basis. We just simply get up in the morning and stretch. Some meditate, some put on a cup of coffee. We brush our teeth, take a shower, and get ready for the day's proceedings. Where am I going with this? Right here. Right here with gratitude. Right here with being grateful that all of us present at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living, as well as those who are joining us online today, tomorrow, and even next month, I am sure are all grateful that we have lived to see another day. So, the title of what I hope will be an inspirational message is Gratitude with an Attitude. I just made that up. <laughs> Growing up, I've always recognized that my father was older than most of the fathers of my friends, and almost every father for anyone I had met. For those of you who might not know, my father transitioned in March of 2007, one week before he would have turned 80, and his birthday was last week, Sunday. He was a member of the Royal Air Force where he participated in World War II and thereafter lived the humble life of an accountant. Anyone who knows me knows that I love my father. He was my hero, my friend, and my rock. But being acutely aware of his age, I knew that he didn't have much time left on this plane of existence. So I had to make the most of it. I went almost every single place with daddy. During the summer holidays, if, it wasn't, if I wasn't spending it in Manchester with my grandmother, I would accompany my father to work. In prep school, he would carry me to school and this was really the highlight of most of my days. Then on Saturdays, we would go to the supermarket and get groceries. And then afterwards, um, we'd get food. He never ate anything, but he would just sit and watch me eat three pieces of chicken. <laughs> Fries, go large, if it's KFC, coleslaw. <laughs> and people would just be like, that boy is so skinny, he can manage all of that. <laughs> and my father would be like, yes.
separate and apart from all of that, he left me with some very valuable lessons. Mostly learned by observing how he lived his life. And for that, I am extremely grateful. I honestly can say that I would not have been the person that I am now if it wasn't for him. University was a very trying period for me. Though I had a roof over my head, food on the table, and a bed to sleep in, there were still certain things that left me wanting. My father was my main financial provider. And now I had to heavily rely on my mother, who had my sister to um, take care of to school, and she herself was doing her master's. And I can say I had a hard time adjusting to not having my father around. But God was always present in my life and worked through me and for me, even though I may not have recognized it. Opportunities pre presented themselves in the form of tutoring and singing, which not only offered me financial aid and help to hone my vocal skills, but it helped to provide me with an additional support system of new friends and strengthening some old connections. Not many of you may know this, but before I got to university, I didn't think I could sing. <laughs> Nobody never tell me, oh, yeah, you know, I, I might have probably heard it once in my life. But thank God for Mr. Dexter <laughs> for honing that, for being a major person to hone that skill. Ernest Holmes writes, gratitude is one of the chief graces of human existence and is crowned in heaven with a consciousness of unity. What does that mean? In a nutshell, the act of being grateful is one of the few precious gifts that we have. A gift so divine that once we access and truly embrace it, we experience the kingdom of heaven, a true and lasting connection with that God presence within. Being actively aware of this connection to God is what we all truly desire. So how do we achieve this through gratitude? It is as simple as it sounds. Be grateful and never stop. Elizabeth Daniels is a teacher of the law of attraction and author of Manifesting Love and the Law of Attraction and Money. She writes, there is a key step in the law of attraction that people often forgot, forget to use. They get so swamped up in making lists and visualizations that they forget one of the most important and easiest parts of the law of attraction. Even when they do remember it, they don't use it correctly. This important step is gratitude. Every day you see people who live wonderful lives and those who wish they could live a better life. The ones who could have a better life have one thing in common. They lack gratitude for what they already have. They can't gain more so long as they fail to appreciate what they already have. Their lack of gratitude closes them off from receiving more, and they are ungrateful for what they've already received. So what is the law of attraction? In a nutshell, for those who need a refresher, <laughs> the law of attraction is a belief that by focusing on positive or negative thoughts, you will bring positive or negative experiences into your life. The law of attraction works with the principle of like attracts like. And for most people, they want to attract positive things into their lives. Practicing gratitude daily helps you to focus on the positives in your life. When we train our mind to find things to be thankful for, we are also working with the law of attraction. We are saying to the universe, yes! I want more of this life, or more of this in my life. The law of attraction does not play games. If you are focusing on the positive, more positive will come. Alternatively, if you focus on the negative, 
unfortunately more negative will be attracted to your life. We spend so much time focusing on what we want and our intent, which is very important, but we also need to be grateful for what we are presented with in life. Be grateful for the ability to wake up each and every morning, the ability to experience the world through our five senses, the job that we have to help provide us with shelter, food, and clothing, and so many other wonderful experiences that this world has to offer. Because I can guarantee you, the moment we start doing this is the moment that we realize what a wonderful and truly enriching world we live in and our blessings, needs, and wants that are all ours will be received. So, I have some affirmations. You can write, you can listen, you can let it soak in. I experience gratitude for everything I have in my life. I always receive exactly what I ask for and appreciate that. <laughs> I am grateful for excellent health. Prosperity and true love. My life is filled with an abundance of goodness. All challenges are an opportunity for growth. And I am thankful for the chance to evolve. I am so grateful for supportive friends and a loving family. And I'm going to ask you to turn to your neighbor and say, I am so grateful for you. We've reached a neighbor across the street by now. <laughs> I appreciate everything I have in my life. I appreciate everything I have in my life. And always keep the door open for more blessings. The universe supports me and all my desires. I am the co-creator of my reality. I am the co-creator of my reality. I see the beauty in nature that surrounds me. And finally, I am blessed. Louder. I don't think the neighbor across the street heard you. Good. And though it took me some time to realize that what was said in Hebrews 13 verse 5 is absolutely true, be content with what you have. For God himself has said, I will never, never let go your hand. I will never, never forsake you. I had everything at my disposal. I just had to be grateful for what I already had. I started becoming more appreciative of my friends and other human interactions and opportunities that came by, and I also started to accept and love and be grateful for my voice. A voice that, though I never thought I had, seemed to have improved over the years. <laughs> but what was also of importance was that I was never truly alone. And that realization is what I am most grateful for. Namaste.